What's up guys? Welcome back to Virtual Engine. Today we're in Orchard Beach and we got this amazing SRT8 and yes, his awesome owner, Chris. <laughs> What's going on? All right. Um, Finally, before we get to this car, let's talk about you. What got you into cars? Well, honestly, I had a Dodge Charger RT years ago, probably 2018, 2019. That car pretty much started it off for me. I had the same exact car in red, RT. It was a 5.7 at the time. Honestly, I remember building that car, having so much fun with it, and then the motor blew, and it was like, I gotta upgrade. But I didn't want to get what everybody gets. Everybody gets Hellcats, the new Scat Packs. I was like, I want an SRT. That's what I want. So that's what really got me into it, honestly. Why particularly the Charger? Because you started with the RT, so what, what got you there? What? Honestly, it was random. I was like, I was in between the BMW at the time and the Charger. And the Charger just stood out to me, it was right. So it was like, it was simple, it was straightforward. It was like, stand out, it's a V8. Everyone was like, oh, you got a big motor, you got a big body. And that's really what started it. But honestly, it was just all about having fun at first. Now it's kind of me building the car, trying to put my passion and pride into what I've built. But it's a process. It's always a process. Clearly this isn't stock. Yeah. <laughs> Far away from stock. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go over some of the mods if you don't mind. Yeah, definitely. So like, as you see, I got the wide body on the full car. I got the rims, Beretta rims, CM1s. Got the color tints. Not everybody's a fan of them, but got the color tints. I got the forest carbon on the hood, the mirrors, the roof, and the spoiler. Starlights on the interior, headlights, fog lights completed. Pretty much everything is touched in this car, from suspension to the interior, everything. It's a big process. But favorite thing probably is the wide body, since that took me the longest to get done. But that's probably my favorite, along with the rims. And if I'm not mistaken, you've done most of this yourself. Yeah, I do everything myself on my vehicle. The only thing I don't do myself probably I would say is engine work, but I've done basically everything on this car. So now what do you have done to the engine? <laughs> That's classified. Classified, That's all right. Classified. Gotcha. But I am fully tuned. I'm built. <laughs> That's classified. The internals is very classified. And, and it sounds <laughs> crazy. I, I was saying when you were driving earlier. Everybody questions, why does the car sound the way it does? If I spit what's in the internals, that's when it's gonna spit out my two-step. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's like thunder, oh, man. man. Thunder and lightning. Yeah. So, what are your favorite things about this car? Honestly, I just like how versatile it is. Versatile, meaning I'm a car show build, but if I want to take it to the track or take it to a legal pit to do donuts, I can do that. Having a versatile car opens up opportunities for me. I can do car shows, I can do commercials, I can do action, I can do track, I can just have fun. We only live one life. I didn't want to live it with a boring car. I wanted to have some fun, so it opens up that opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, let's counter that. What's something what well, your least favorite things about this car? The attention. Sometimes it's the bad attention I get. You'll get attention from obviously the enforcement. You'll get attention from people who don't understand it and then they question you. You also get attention from people looking at the car and saying, hey, what is this guy? This guy is ghetto or things like that. But other than that, honestly, if you understand cars, you understand this is more of a passion more than just sitting here and saying, oh, he's ghetto. It's more of a passion. But that's like the negative thing that counteracts me. Absolutely. Now, a few months ago, this yeah. was all Tiffany Blue. It was all mint green. Mint green, Black. sorry. Light mint green. Let's do that. <laughs> it's up. the lightest shade of mint green. Now, you can keep it. You, you should, okay. Everybody gets that confused. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now we got some uh, some new stuff. I thought this was a wrap, an additional wrap. So honestly, a lot of people may have thought it was that, but if you do look at it, you can tell it's graffiti. 
The and whole, close. Yeah, the whole entire rear end is graffiti. It's spray painted on both sides. Just got bored. Honestly, what happened was I got very bored one day with just the regular rap look. And I was like, I want to add something to the car. Just have people look. And that's what I completed. I completed the look of the graffiti, the Mopar M, and then SRT8 on the other side. And you did this all freehand? All freehand. Obviously, the M and stuff, that was drawn with a marker at one point to make the sharp edges, but everything was freehand. No stencils. I mean, it looks like it was designed on a computer, a <laughs> graphic, everything. Yeah. I had it planned out on what I wanted to go where, but the actual concept of how it happened was freehanded. Very natural. So, what stands out to you as a favorite memory with this car? Very favorite memory. That's a hard one. I had a lot. My favorite memory is obviously when I have the crowd around and everybody's having fun. Probably bangers from early season 2023 when we went there initially. We had everybody. There was over 2,000 people and we had a crowd. When we was doing two step out front, I had everybody. That was probably the most fun I've had because it was all legal extremely fun, two-stepping, having fun shooting with flames, everybody's recording. That was like probably the most fun I've had. Is this the one on Long Island or? This is the one from Middletown. Middletown, okay. Yeah, yeah, Middletown. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Middletown I, with Bingham that's Bruce where we met. At the legal pit and everything. Yes, yes. That, that event was crazy. That event was like the original start for everything. I remember hearing your car and I'm like, oh my God, what is making all that <laughs> popping noise? And then I saw it was yeah. a, a charger. Yeah. Oh, damn. Like my car pops. It pops pretty loud. It just doesn't pop fast, but it pops loud. So that's why I went two steps here and there, but it's all about just having fun at the end of the day. I built the car to have fun and to compete with all competitions, whether it's car shows, track, doing donuts, having fun, two-stepping, everything. I, compete. I made my car to compete with all topics. doing these mods obviously you save a lot of money doing it yourself but for the parts what do you do to afford what do i do i do ceramic coatings i vinyl wrap and i also do all forms of detailing interior detailing exterior detailing things of that nature it's all basically making car show cars look car show ready that's what i do so i do all forms of vinyl wrapping whether it's decals full wraps stripes i do all of them also you want to plug that in right here <laughs> how people find plug you plug that in uh, my Instagram is SRT8 underscore Chris. That's my Instagram. It will be linked over here. <laughs> so, yeah. That's awesome. basically what I do for my living. It gets me by. It allows me to have the fun I have. So, that's like the best part. <laughs> now, for someone trying to get into a car like this or getting into the car community these days, what's some advice you would have for someone? It doesn't matter what car you start with. To get into the car community, it's about having just the passion and understanding, not just Mopars, but all cars in general. You can start with any car, any make, any model. It's about how you build it, how you make it, and how do you put your passion into that vehicle. That's more of how I've seen it. When I started, I started with an RT, and I remember someone dissing me at an auto zone. When I went to go get some parts, he's like, What's, uh, what car you got? I was like, RT. He was like, what's something? I was like, 5.7. He's like, damn, not enough horses. I swear that stays with me to this day because I was like, now nah, I got the 6-1, where you at, boy? <laughs> but no, yeah, you can start with any car. You can start with an Infiniti G35, G37. You can start with any car in general, honestly. It does not matter. As long as you put the passion in, I feel like that's where you start. Before we wrap this up, 
it was a little something that happened a little while ago. I know we know we can't talk about it a oh, lot, yeah. but uh, you want to talk a little bit about? Yeah, so they'll they'll put the video in for you guys. It's gonna be somewhere around here. <laughs> what happened was in that video, you're gonna see a little portion where they're throwing me up against my car. I'm taking my hand. I'm trying to grab my mask. So we went to a cruise with SRT Nick, which is Nick's professionals, big shop, big known man. SRT Shack, that's his Instagram. It'll be linked over here as well. He's very big in the community. We hosted a cruise where we'll basically go to 42nd Street for Halloween, do it for the kids, go have fun, listen to music. Obviously there was people that went there with the wrong intentions. Someone in front of me had did a burnout. The burnout was so huge. All the smoke flew backwards. It looked like my car was doing it. In the action and in the motion of the action, cops ran to my car, stopped doing the burnout, ripped me out the, uh, broke my window, ripped me out the car, and basically it went down from there, it went south. So what happened was wrong, but that's all I can say about that situation. We have people in the community that obviously go for different reasons. We try to keep things nice and clean, we try to go for cruises. And obviously we have people that have fun. It's not wrong that he did, it's wrong that he did the burnout, but it's just wrong place, wrong time for everything. That's really what it was. Like everybody has their reasons for doing something. Maybe it was the crowd for him that he did his burnout, but it's completely fine what happened. We're gonna proceed with life, move on forward. But um, just got the car back, honestly, three, four days ago. So trying to rebuild from there, restart the process again. I got things on this car that now need to be fixed because enforcement taking my car and then breaking my car. So just gonna move forward from there, see what needs to happen and then move on, really. There was a point where you almost lost the car. Yeah, there was a part where I almost lost the car in total, which was like them not trying to give me the car back. I got it back. It's really nothing with that now. That part of the whole entire action is over. I have the car back, so it's over. That's it's mine. <laughs> it's all that matters. Yeah, exactly. Well, Chris, I appreciate you finally coming on. Dude, <laughs> thank it's you. It's been a long time waiting. Long time. <laughs> but definitely. No, no, We're done. No, no, no.